Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms Texas. What's going on? Well, just wanted to give you a little update. So this is the backyard project we were working on. If you remember before, when we put in the gate and we extended the fence, one thing we wanted to do was we took down the wrought iron fence that was here. There was a row of red tip hedge. And when you pulled in the driveway, you couldn't even see the pool. Well, we want to change that. We want to get it to a point where when you pull up, you got curb appeal, it looks nice, attractive, just makes it look a lot more wide open. Uh, also, the hedge and everything blocked the uh, south wind during the summer, which is really nice to kind of cool things off. I apologize for the landscape crew behind me, but uh, anyway, so what are we doing? Well, I'm showing you the next project as part of this, and this is going to be a retaining wall. We got some shadows here. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see this or not, but we had a little water problem up here, so I'm gonna put in a drainage pipe. But then across here, we're gonna put in some landscape timbers. I say landscape timbers. These are uh, railroad cross ties, grade one cross ties. Well, let me tell you what, a little bit of a learning curve. They're heavy. They're real heavy. Those things are like 200 pounds a piece solid I don't know what kind of wood it is but all I can tell you is man whoo so I got a pretty good slope here so one of the things we're gonna do you can see where the old post came out we're gonna have to dig down about that deep I got a drainage pipe here that's gonna have to be rerouted uh, minor detail major detail I've already started to pile the dirt up when we remove the red tip hedge but uh, I got to dig a trench basically about a foot wide and it's gotta be deeper than what I need and the trench has gotta be level. And uh, then I'll come in there and I'll probably put about four inches of gravel all the way across the trench, tamp the gravel down, get it the proper level and it'll probably have to stair step up. But the goal being over here, I want it to be about this high and it'll come down here, which you got more slope. And over here, it'll be somewhere in this neighborhood about this high coming across. That way it'll be level, it won't block the view. It'll also catch any debris that blows up the driveway before it goes into the pool. Then we'll put a drainage ditch down the back side uh, of the wall, put some more gravel on the back side of the wall so there'll be no moisture issues. And a uh, little landscape fabric on the back of the uh, retaining wall. We'll backfill it level it all out put some new mulch in it plant some more of this uh, feather grass i'm a big fan of this stuff it's uh, basically just animates your uh, landscape you know it just kind of gives that landscape a moving aspect to it plus it's heat tolerant durable and then i got to do kind of the same thing on that side with a little mini wall over there to get that bed level so just wanted to kind of show you an intro video the projects just never end around here. There's something going on all the time. Hey, thanks guys. Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms giving you an update on the retaining wall. So this is the railroad tie retaining wall. This is all part of that big gate fence project that we were doing. We're actually changing this so that your drive up appeal, you know, when you first drive up, we want the first thing to see in our backyard. Nice, beautiful swimming pool and uh, hopefully beautiful landscaping. But we had that old, ugly, uh, six foot tall red tip hedge that was blocking everything. We had that old rusty uh, wrought iron fence. This is a severe slope here. So the first problem we were having was uh, the water would drain down onto the sidewalk, onto the driveway. You had problems with that. So we're gonna change all that. So uh, we're gonna first, we're gonna fix some of the drainage problems. So when water would trap over on the uh, patio under severe rain, we now have a little green filtered deal over there, little French drain coming out to the patio. Then we're gonna run our railroad ties. This end over here will probably be about a foot or 18 inches tall. Down on that end, maybe as high as uh, 24 or 30 inches tall because of the slope. But what we have to do, if you've ever put in one of these walls, it's gonna butt up against the uh, concrete, which is gonna hold the railroad ties in place. 
but underneath the railroad ties, it's gotta be perfectly level. And not only that, it has to have a, uh, maybe a four inch base of rock so that it'll drain well and it'll support it. And we don't want this to settle or move any over time. So this is the preliminary trench. The other part of it is once you get it dug down to whatever is level, we'll have to get like an eight foot two by four or two by six to check to make sure it's level. Once we get that all figured out, then we gotta set the, uh, the railroad ties on the gravel after tamping it in place. Then we'll backfill the railroad ties with landscape cloth, a combination of this perforated drain pipe, and then a bunch of gravel on the backside of it. So any water that comes down towards the railroad ties are basically going to hit gravel, then it's gonna hit the drainage pipe, and then uh, landscape fabric over all of that. It'll drain down here to the corner, turn the corner, go over to a uh, French drain that goes around the corner of the shop and get the water around of here. So everything should be good at that point in time. We had a problem here before where the previous contractor did us a real disservice. Uh, you can see the severe angle this was at. And he tried to do it with a couple of 45s, which over time the ground shifted and popped out. So this area always had water in it. Matter of fact, we got water into the corner of the shop on certain days with the heavy rain, the garage shop floor would have water standing on it. We're fixing all of that. That's all coming to an end. But the big problem is, man, this is just work. This is serious work. Let me tell you what, manhandling those cross, uh, railroad cross ties, those things are like 200 pounds a piece. But you have to work smart, like the Egyptians. You lift one end, put it on a roller, lift one end, put it on PVC pipe. And you kind of just shuffle them around and get them into the right spot that you want. So uh, anyway, we'll keep you updated, but uh, I'm telling you, blood and guts, blood and guts. But hey, you know, I'm only gonna do this retaining wall once and I'm gonna do it right. So uh, hope you guys like what you see. Leave me a comment. What do you think about this project? Hey man, glory be to God, more details to follow. Where are you going? Camera. I just wanna get in there and help. Sadie, are you helping? We have a helper. Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, here we go again. Another wet, miserable day. We're back on this project trying to get finished with the uh, retaining wall. So what are we working on? Well, if you remember when we started this fenced in backyard project, one of the things we wanted was what, when you pulled into the driveway, that you would have a nice view of the pool. You would see the landscaping, that big ugly red tip hedge, which was halfway dead, was gone. There's no fence there anymore, just wide open spaces. But we needed some type of retaining wall. Pay no attention to the one railroad tie laying there. That's gotta leave along with those others. I gotta figure out the little area what I'm gonna do on the step back there. But anyway, we did pretty good today. So we notched. For the drainage, we gave room that if we ever had to get that guy in or out for some reason, we could do it. Um, we got a little issue down here with the other drainage, but I think I've got that figured out. Big pile of mud because of all the rain. But for the most part, you can see we got our drainage in, we got gravel, you can see coming in here. I'm getting ready to put uh, staple landscape fabric to the backside 
of the uh, cross ties. Once we do that, we'll be ready to start uh, stapling it in and then we can start backfilling. Move on with this project. This one guy that's left over here, he's gonna go on that short section on the other side of the sidewalk. But over there, it's not necessarily for drainage purposes. It's more uh, just cosmetic on that side. It'd be a lot easier. Anyway, guys, that's what we're working on. Hey, more info to find. Okay, here is the uh, next step of the project. So you can see we took the landscape fiber or fabric, came in there, we covered the drainage tube and the gravel, and we put this in. And hopefully this will keep uh, roots and things from growing into the drainage ditch. The gravel should allow the water to flow and not puddle up. And uh, the landscape fabric on the back of the uh, railroad ties should give us a nice line to go and grade to. Uh, so you got an inch or two sticking out and hopefully it'll all just tie it in very nice. So right now it's just mud and gumbo. You can't even get it off your shovel. So it's about all I can do for today. I'm just gonna clean up the project now, get reorganized, clean the driveway, and hey, we'll get ready for the work week. Thank you guys, glory be to God. Hey you guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, thought I would take this opportunity to show you the finished railroad tie retaining wall that we made. So if you remember on this project, we used to have a uh, wrought iron fence through here with some red tips. And when you pulled into the driveway or the motorcade, you couldn't see uh, the pool or the backyard or anything. Well, we took all of that out and we came in here. We had a little bit of a drainage issue over here with the shop and uh, around the uh, outdoor kitchen. So we corrected a couple of things. So the first thing we did was we put in a drain that you can see right there that runs down so as water is captured up next to the uh, outdoor kitchen. It comes out, we notched around it, left room. We came in here and we put uh, railroad ties and you can see the ground is not level. So we had to actually come in here and dig out the ground and put gravel down to make all of the ties level. The other thing that we did was we came in here and we drilled holes and we uh, basically put three foot rebar through these uh, railroad ties in various places and that's to hold it in place and to keep it from moving. I don't know if you guys have ever done anything with railroad ties, but they are extremely heavy. I think they're like 200 pounds a piece almost. So then over here, we had two drains that came in that goes into this French drain here in front of the shop that actually goes out there and does a 90 degrees. So we took all of that, we consolidated it, and we actually made a little sidewalk area right here to come in here, and now you can go to the backyard. So there you go, there's the finished project. We put in uh, Mexican feather grass, which you can see the ones at the front were original, the ones at the back are new. But when they're all fully grown, uh, basically it's going to be a solid bed and uh, really provides a lot of motion to your landscape. They're drought tolerant. I like them because I can tell which direction the wind's blowing. Uh, and then this bed over here, excuse all the pool equipment, but we did get another cross tie over here. Got this bed taken care of. This one done. I still got a little work to do of cutting that one block down. But hey, there's the finished project. Railroad cross tie retaining wall. I think the project turned out really good. Kind of gives it that natural look. I didn't really want to use any of the uh, precast stone blocks that you would see at the box hardware stores from paved stone or anything. I wanted something that looked a little more natural. And uh, I like this because it's reusing uh, materials and giving them a new purpose in life. So anyway, hey guys, let me know what you think. Do you like the retaining wall? Talk to you soon, thanks.